Right, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third demonstration today. Do you all want to take a step about three metres that way, because we're going to talk about these tools. So, welcome to the LPCB live demonstration area. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen any of these today, but the whole purpose of the two days is just to give people a flavour of what we do at BRE Global and our approvals of physical security products under the LPCB banner. First part of the talk is uh, about the tools and the standards, and then we get to the really interesting part where I stop talking and you actually get to see some uh, live testing, just to give you a flavour. So, what you've got in front of you is a whole raft of tools that come from the various standards that we approve products to. So we're a third party approvals body providing third party certification into the physical uh, security industry. Um, and starting at this end of the table, we have tools from the PASS24 standard. This is a uh, domestic security standard. Again, quite low level tools, paint scrapers, small screwdrivers, um, brick bolsters, uh, chisels, screwdrivers. We've even got a mechanised torque wrenched crowbar. So we're limited on the amount of force that we can apply to that standard. So this is designed really for your domestic front door, your front door in your house. Um, and there are other restrictions. We're not allowed to smash the glass. And as part of the testing we're going to do on Selector Glaze's uh, non-approved uh, product is some tests just to demonstrate the, the use of those tools. But at no point are we allowed to smash that glass and, and get through. Moving away from PASS24, we come to EN 1627, pan-European standard for uh, security. Again, a bit more wide variety of tools, um, but again, restrictions. So the hacksaw, although it's in the kit, you can only use it on exposed hinges. Uh, in terms of the tube, it doesn't fit on the end of the uh, screwdriver, so you can't use it as an extra leverage. This hammer here is only to be used in conjunction with pin punches. And again, the crowbar, you know, quite handy for a variety of things, not just levering, but we're not allowed to impact the product with this. So although the tools are actually in the standard, doesn't mean the standard is actually giving you the products that you want for the risk that you're trying to uh, sort of uh, prevent entry in through uh, uh, attack. So moving away from the, the uh, PAS24 and European standards, we come to this raft of tools that all fit within our LPS 1175. And the majority of the products that you see within this arena over, over today and tomorrow are already approved products. And the reason these standards exist is that there's a need in the market to have products that actually do what they're supposed to be doing. So here you see a whole raft of tools, category A, B, C, D, etc., all the way up to H. We haven't brought everything with us, but uh, effectively that gives you an idea of the, the, the whole range of tools that we can use. Now up until January, we were at LPS 1175 issue 7. So an SR1 attack was category A tools for one minute. SR2 was B for three minutes, C for five, D for 10, etc., etc. In January, we published issue eight. Now it's the same set of tool kits, A to H, but now we can use those tool sets at any time limit within the bands that we use. So one minute, three minute, five minute, 10 minute, 15 and 20. So if your risk is low level tools, but you own a product that actually gives, say 10 minutes of resistance, the manufacturers and the specifiers can now use an A10 rated product. Before they weren't able to do that. So it's, it's become more holistic in actually giving products that are designed for what you want them for. So if you need a 10 minute resistance, you could take, for example, a D10, where we've got sledgehammers and hooligan bars and 12 volt drills, or you could potentially take two D5 products. You're still getting that 10 minute resistance. So there's much more flexibility in the standard, going all the way up to the petrol grinders and the oxy acetylene kit. Obviously, as you can understand, they weren't too happy about me uh, and the boys using the, um, the grinders and the, uh, uh, the hot works uh, over the, these two days. But anyway, what we are hoping to do is give you a flavour of some of the lower tools and actually show you they are quite effective, even at the lower end A, B and C uh, levels. Okay, in terms of 1175, there is no restriction on tools. We have that raft of tools, we can use them in any combination, we can break them, we can make noise. Literally, apart from injuring ourselves, there's pretty much no restriction on, on how we go about it. What I will say though, is not just one test. There's a misconception that if you see, for example, an 1175 A1 product, we've turned up, we've done a bit of testing, one test, one minute, 
eight tools? No. We'll probably do 20 or 30 tests on the whole system. So it's about the whole system. It's not just about the lock, it's not just about the hinges, it's not just about the bit of fence, it's about the whole system working together. And we will do as many tests as we need to do to make sure that we can't get through that product in the time and with the tools available. Now at issue eight, that does make it a bit more complex because a customer might come in and say, well actually, I want to see where it sits at B, but things might go very well and we jump to C. But the whole purpose of the test program is to come hopefully out with a set of data that the engineers, the cert engineers, can then take the, the product drawings and assess the product range. So in terms of an initial test program, it's all about obtaining data to move forward to get to the final certificate. And that might mean one specimen, it might mean multiple specimens, but we do as much testing as possible to get the data that we need. So, um, in terms of failure criteria, before we get Toby and the guys on to actually smashing something up, the main criteria is that body block. That represents me and you, probably not me, but um, uh, in terms of getting through the product. So if we can get that through the product, in the time allowed with the tools available at the rating that we're looking for, that will deem to be a failure. Often than not, we don't actually need to make that size of a hole to get that block through. And by that, I mean we often make hand-sized holes and we will then reach through and operate internal hardware. If you've got panic bars, we might do small drill tests and use the ropes and the wire to try and fish them. So um, we've got a whole raft of, of sneaky tests and, and hit and hope tests, but the whole um, test program comes into one to make sure that the end result is that we can't get that body block through uh, the product. Where a product isn't designed for that body block, we can actually under 1175 specify the exact failure criteria. So for example, key safes uh, is the key, removal of the key from the key safe itself or the removal of the key safe off the substrate to take away at your own leisure and do whatever you want with it. In terms of a bike shed, for example, again, it's not necessarily about body entry, it's about getting the bike out. So in that case, the failure criteria might be bigger. So it can be adapted, but what it is adapted to is something that's appropriate for the product. So you're not going to see a key safe that resists this because it's a complete waste of time. So anyway, we're obviously here for a couple of days. If after the uh, demo you want to come and ask any questions, please do. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is move all the way back along here and we're going to start at this end with the fencing. So whilst the, guys, uh, whilst, whilst the guys get ready for the, uh, uh, the demonstration, here we've got a uh, fence system from Zorn. Uh, both are approved fencing. Here we've got uh, uh, an SR1 now, an A1 at issue 8, and we've got an SR2 now, a B3 at uh, issue 8. And what the guys are going to do is going to show you a typical test that we would do uh, to put these through the uh, program. Okay, Tom. So again, Tom's got here uh, typical A1 tools, oh, uh, A tool, sorry, knife and a lever. Away you go, Tom. Okay, Tom, you can stop there. So, ladies and gentlemen, although it's only a knife and a lever, we can actually do quite a lot of damage. They are good knives, I hasten to add. Uh, again, it's not just about one test. So, Tommy's now coming with an alternative uh, category A tool, uh, and we'll see the effectiveness of that. So, again, we're going back to we're trying to get the body block through the fence by any means that we can with the tools available in the time available. And we'll go through the whole uh, tool kit, basically, within reason, to make sure that we can't get through that product. So again, 20 or 30 tests, even on a, on a fairly uh, basic system like a fence, uh, obviously going through the mesh, using the free edges, uh, and using the clamp bars, etc., and posts, which I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, Tommy, you can stop there. So again, we've got a bit further with those tools, but clearly we're not in, uh, in terms of one minute for the uh, Category A tools. So coming away from the mesh, uh, again, we're looking at how the mesh is connected to the post. We don't very often do uh, post tests at uh, A tools. Generally, they're, they're thick enough that we know that we can't uh, shear them in, uh, in one minute or push them over or come overcome the fixings. Okay, Podrick, carry away. But we will attempt to uh, uh, try and shear the fixings 
uh, to remove the clamp bar. Oh, okay, Podri, you can stop there. I'm not, I'm not going to make him do it all day. He gets upset. So, Okay, so that just gives you a flavour at the Category A tools. Now, moving on, this fence doesn't look significantly different, but it is actually a, a, a B3 fence. Um, mainly reason for the increased thickness of the uh, vertical members. It's got the same horizontal wires. Uh, Tom is now going to take the knife and the uh, claw hammer. Again, using the same tools... Okay, thank you, Tom. So although we've used the same knife, all we've done there is changed from the lever to the hammer. So you start to see the effectiveness of the bigger tools. Again, an alternative method is using the uh, bolt cutters. And again, we'll do a whole series of tests to get the optimum time to cut through the various elements. And we can use that then to work out what the best method would be to actually do a full test to get the body block through the uh, mesh fence. We'll compare the times for the, uh, the cut lengths and work out which is the quickest. Okay, Tommy, do you want to move over to the verticals? Now, one of the reasons this gets an SR2 is obviously they've got 10 mil uh, solid bar running up. So again, at the category B cutters, it's very difficult to cut those. So again, although it's got the same horizontal mesh, we're starting to have problems with cutting that. Okay, Tommy, stop there, thank you. Right. Yeah, okay. So again, in terms of the size of the body block, we've got to release quite a few of these to then get the body block through. And again, the clamp fixings, uh, we'll be trying to shear these, trying to clamp the, uh, cut the bars to overcome the fixings, and we work round the product until we're absolutely comfortable that within one minute, three minutes, whichever tool or times we're using, we can't get through the, uh, through the product. So just to finish off, Tom's going to try and cut that with a knife. Okay, Tom, stop there. You'll send that knife going flying out. It's probably got a nice dent in it now, is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, And again, once we've damaged the tool, we will replace it for the next test. So every time we use drill bits, uh, we replace them with new ones. So every test is done fresh. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a flavour on fences. As I say, come and talk to us uh, afterwards if you want to know a bit more.